In this video, we're going to cover which is better, Fortinet or Palo Alto. Stay tuned. Hey guys, Mike here from Fortinet Guru. Now I know what you're saying. With a name like Fortinet Guru, obviously I'm going to be pro Fortinet, but you'd be surprised. I have experience with both firewalls. I do a lot of work in both. I actually helped the Air Force convert over from Cisco FWSM to Palo Alto 5060s way back when. So I have a strong familiarity and grounding in Palo Alto's capabilities as well as the firewalls overall. I, in fact, learned next-gen firewall manipulation specifically on their product before I jumped into Fortinet. So don't let the name fool you. You know, there's a lot to go both ways on each device, and we're going to cover them. First things first, from a security perspective, Fortinet and NSS Labs reports edges out the Palo Alto, and it's by a very small margin. The Fortinet comes in at 99.3% security rating, whereas the Palo Alto comes in at 98.7%. Now, that difference is pretty, pretty negligible between the two of them, not enough to make you go one way or the other, but when you look at things like the fact that the Fortinet is substantially cheaper for the same type of performance and security, that's what really grabs most people in that regard. Um, the Fortinet from a security, speed, and cost perspective, it's, it's going to be, you know, way ahead of the pack. The average cost per protected megabit of bandwidth on a Fortinet device is only $2. That means you're paying $2 per meg, 200 per hundred. 2,000 per gigabit, and that's a huge, you know, bang for buck rating. Whereas the Palo Alto side of things, you're looking at more around $7 per megabit, which puts you around to, you know, 700 for 100 and then 7,000 for a gigabit. Obviously, those numbers kind of scale as you go higher up, but it's something worth looking at if you're looking at lowest cost, technically acceptable product, Fortinet's going to win in that regard. Now, with that being said, Palo Alto, in my opinion, has better application control and visibility. The app control tab within the device actually gives you significantly better understanding, and it's, it's a lot more intuitive as well um, with regards to application control and the threats that it presents. Fortinet's come a long way in that regard, but the Palo Alto does have an edge in that, in that area. Not to mention the wildfire sandboxing that Palo provides us is a better product overall as well. When you're looking at things like support, Palo Alto comes ahead there. Now user satisfaction ratings rate both vendors at a 4.5, 4.6 roughly. Um, depending on which actual reporting you're looking at, it's identical for both. So they come out even there. But people tend to have a better quality of support from Palo Alto when they're calling in. As far as ease of configurability, ease of deployment, things of that nature. Fortinet is very, very easy and intuitive. You can get it in line and running in no time. So most people tend to have a higher success rate there and a, a higher satisfaction rate in general. The Palo Alto for its benefits does have some added complexity that causes people to get a little bit frustrated during initial configuration and deployment. Deployment wise, both vendors offer hardware versions of their firewalls as well as cloud-driven and virtual machine variants. So it doesn't matter if you go with Palo Alto or Fortinet in this regard, you're gonna have the capability of hardware appliances on site. You could buy licensing and load it in ESXi or uh, Hyper-V, KVM, you know, the various hypervisors that exist out there, or you could throw them in Azure, AWS, and whatever other cloud services exist. So you have a lot of flexibility there. Finally, it comes down to pricing. If you're looking for your best bang for the buck, Fortinet's gonna win. I mean, it's less than a third of the price per protected megabit of the Palo. Fortinet comes in at $2, Palo Alto comes in at seven. So there's a pretty glaring difference there. But then when you look at things like panorama and the management capability that Palo has, and the quality of support that they have, the price per megabit starts making a little bit more sense there. 
Panorama and Florida Manager are the two competing products from these vendors as far as managing a fleet of devices out in the wild. And Panorama does it better. It's more intuitive, it's more clean, it's more polished feeling. I'm perfectly capable in a Florida Manager. I spend more time in one of those, but I can see where that particular product could use some advancements to catch up or pass. When you're looking at things and you realize that you can get an entry level FortiGate that can do 6.5 or 6.7 gigabits of firewall throughput for $500, and the closest Palo item is a thousand. It starts to make sense that maybe if you're going for bang for buck, you just need to stick to the Fortinet. Either way, you're not going to suffer with either device. They're both really good. Both devices work well. You're not going to be in a pickle if you pick either one. I like Fortinet for the cost factor. I have a really hard time as a businessman and entrepreneur spending more money for the same type of protection, especially when you consider the Fortinet comes in ahead on security. But Palo Alto is a cool device, so I guess it depends on where your head's at. With that being said, you're not going to go wrong with either one. So pick the one you feel the most comfortable with and enjoy improving your security substantially because of that. Till next time, see you later. Hey guys, do you like videos like this? If you do and you'd like to continue seeing them, do me a favor, hit the like button on this video and then hit the subscribe button as well. The subscribe button is for you, the like button's for me. I ask this because you need to get notifications when new videos come out and I need to know if the content that I'm producing is worth your while. So do me that solid and until next time, you have a good one.